Because of his immune system was compromised due to his chemotherapy, he contracted a fungal infection. It was over the course of about four and a half hours that he had lost that, that degree of the soft tissue of his face. But somehow, by the grace of God, they give me the right stuff to stop it. When the doctors came in and told me that I had just a very short time to live, because of my face was black from the center of my forehead all the way down here. So we all had to work as a team to really find the best way to give him a facial prosthesis. There are many innovations now using rapid prototyping, navigational surgery, and other digital design softwares that would be able to help us in our preoperative planning to give the patient the best outcome. And due to a prosthesis of that size, we would, would hope to use implant retention. Our object was to try and get four implants above the eyes in what we would call a supraorbital position, four on the lower orbital rims, and two around the base of the nose. So if we had tears, which are essentially just saltwater solution draining down around our implants, we could get a soft tissue reaction that could cause the implants to fail. So we had to plan, Susie had to plan for the drainage some way to collect those tears, keep them away from the implants. Probably the best thing of all is the patient's attitude and his family's support, um, both of which have just been incredible. Everything was planned virtually, and the first time I had to take a clinical impression was after his implants had completely healed. Um, the last stages uh, over the last two months was when I created the prosthesis. We paired his CT data from uh, the CT he acquired prior to losing his face to with his other CT he had prior to surgery. And by manipulating those two data sets, we worked with engineers from a company called Medical Modeling to create a prototype, then duplicating it and bringing it into the clinic. The retentive components of the prosthesis is really magnets that are embedded in an acrylic substructure. Those are then embedded into the wax sculpture so that I could snap it directly onto the patient and sculpt on them. This allows them to be able to move around. We can look at it at all different angles and they can give me their feedback. After you have a mold created, it is then addressing the color. I'll do a color session with the patient. We had about 16 different intrinsic colors to create, matching all the different colors that are found in our skin. And those are then painted into the mold intrinsically in layers down to every freckle and blood vessel and age spot that may be found in his uh, skin characteristics. Afterwards, for the silicone is then cured in the oven, then it comes out as a flexible silicone prosthesis. Color is then added on the outside, and all of the hairs from the eyebrow and the, and the mustache were then inserted individually or sewn in. So the use of technology really has enhanced his treatment. But I think all in all, the success of his treatment is based on his wonderful positive attitude and the faith he's had through everything. It's really not just a physical adjustment, but it's an emotional adjustment. And we started that emotional healing in the very beginning. So not only did he have to adjust to losing his face, but also gaining one again.